Welcome Hoop Strategist fans. This is the first ever NBA Power Rankings for the early part of 2024. I'm not here to waste your time, so let's get right to it. But wait, there's a catch. Before I reveal my top four teams, you need to watch the short video in the right hand corner where I explain my rankings from eight to five. It will only be 60 seconds of your time. You see, I have a very strict criteria for ranking the teams. They need to have a defensive rating of 116 or less, an offensive rating of 110 or more, and be a positive net rating as a result. That means only eight teams made the cut, and some of them might surprise you. For example, the defending champion Denver Nuggets and the Milwaukee Bucks are not in my top eight. That's right, Giannis and Jokic are out of the picture. If you have a problem with that, feel free to leave a comment and let me know why, but be prepared to back it up with some stats and stand on business. So without further ado, let's get into the top four teams of 2024. Next up at number four, we have the Boston Celtics. They are by my accounts the best team thus far this season, but they have been outshined by some other contenders in 2024 so far. The Celtics have a record of 12 and six since the new year, and they are in the middle of the pack among the top eight teams. They don't excel in any particular category yet, but they don't lag behind either. They have an offensive rating of 119.5, and a defensive rating of 110. What surprised me about the Celtics is their use of post-ups, which is a rare sight in today's NBA. Post-ups are the third most frequent play type they run, and they mainly go to Porzingis and Tatum to exploit mismatches. They use their size by putting Tatum in the mid post against smaller defenders, smaller guards, smaller wings, and letting him back them down and then just shoot over the top. The same with Porzingis. They allow him to seal deep in the paint. Once he gets the entry pass, more than likely, he's just turning the shoulder and shooting over the top. On the other end, their perimeter defense is relentless. Holiday, Tatum, White, Brown are all lockdown defenders who force their opponents into tough shots and or turnovers. And now, at number three, we have the New York Knicks. Even without their star forward, Julius Randle, who is injured, the Knicks have been on fire. They have a 15-3 record, and they have been the best defensive team in this year so far with a 105.4 defensive rating. They also dominate the boards as they are the best rebounding team among the top eight. Rebounding is a key part of their game plan as they end their opponent's possessions and extend their own, often with put-back dunks. The Knicks are a tough and scrappy team, and they lead the league in recovered loose balls. They also have a secret weapon, baseline cuts. They position their wing players in their corners, and they sneak behind the defenses for easy layups. The Knicks are not a team that you want to see at this point of the season. We are nearing to the big reveal, but to get there, we first have to cover the number two team, a team whom I had as number one in my initial research for this video. That team is the LA Clippers. The Clippers have been unstoppable on offense with a league leading offensive rating of 125.6, but they have a glaring weakness, which is defense, as they have the worst defensive rating of 115.7 among the top eight teams listed. They have two elite defenders in George and Kawhi, but they as a team don't always bring their A game on that end. The Clippers love to play ISO, which is not surprising given their star power. They have different ways of running ISO depending who has the ball, Kawhi, George, or Harden. But what really sparked their sin was the exact reverse of ISO play. It has been the playmaking skills of James Harden. He routinely makes the right plays to get other teammates open shots. The Clippers are a force to be reckoned with. They have climbed their way to be number one in the West, but they are not the best team so far this year. Drum roll, please. The number one team in the NBA so far in 2024 is the Cleveland Cavaliers. They have the best net rating, the best record of 15 and two, they are second in both offensive rating and defensive rating among the top eight teams. They are third in assist percentage and true shooting percentage. But what really sealed the deal for them was their impressive win over the Clippers, the number two team, on January 29th. 
They beat them by 10 points and shut down everyone except Kawhi Leonard. The Cavs have risen from the play-in tournament to the second seed in the East, and they are playing like a well well machine. They also excel at cutting to the basket, but not from the corners like the Knicks. They cut from the top of the key or the dunker spot as Donovan and their sharpshooters draw attention from the perimeter. That is the key point, the lineup. Donovan Mitchell and Jared Allen have exploded in the absence of Darius Garland and Evan Mobley. Their absence has allowed for the Cavs to play multiple shooters at once, which opens up the floor and allows for those cuts. But now that Garland and Mobley are back, the Cavs have staggered their minutes with their counterpart, that being Mitchell and Allen, and has been effective thus far. Not to mention, since Mobley's return, he has been shooting 71% from three. If he continues to knock down trades at even half that clip, the Cavs can really contend and it will allow both he and Allen to be on the court more minutes together, which allows both Jared and Evan to anchor the defense. But their guards have also been active on that end of the floor, disrupting their opponents with deflections and steals. The Cavs are the best team in the league in early 2024, and they have the stats and wins to prove it. Cavs defensive rating has gone through the roof. Yeah. Allen's been such a big part of that, an underrated part of that, as Mitchell now gets to the foul.